There can be few more mouth-watering sights than fresh strawberries. So imagine what a strain it must be to handle baskets of the choicest fruit and not taste even one. Yet this is the temptation endured by scientists and research chemists at the British Food Manufacturing Industries Research Association when the various crops come in every year for tests like this, the equivalent of a fingerprint chart, a permanent record of the different types, noting such features as colour, shape, condition and weight. The strawberry halves are then heartbreakingly thrown away. The main reason for these tests is to assist and advise the various jam manufacturers and consequently much of the important research is done in the jam stage. As most women have their own methods, we won't pass on a detailed recipe. But for the record, this is the way the scientists make jam. In this case, from six pounds of fruit and nine pounds of sugar. Something the average housewife doesn't use is this jam thermometer. Boiling goes on until the temperature reaches 221 degrees Fahrenheit, at which stage, apparently, the right content of moisture and relation to the solids is obtained. That's what the experts say, but don't let it keep you awake at nights. Although most people are aware of the different varieties of apples, few of us realize that the same applies to strawberries and raspberries. Yet to the Research Association Laboratories in Leatherhead, Surrey, come samples of existing types and promising new selections from growers all over the country. Consequently, each pan of jam has many differing characteristics. This apparatus, for example, a Lovibon Schofield tintometer, measures and records the exact colour. But no matter how many scientific tests the jams undergo, the final, most important, is that of taste. And eating it in this way can be a highly complex chore, a job for experts only, and certainly not money for jam.